Do not attempt PCB manufacture at home without additional information from other sources. This video only covers some aspects of some of the manufacturing processes at home. Additional information is required. Additionally, ferric chloride is only about as dangerous as some other household cleaners, including things like drain cleaner. It is still a potentially hazardous material and should be treated with respect. Please follow PPE and other precautions when dealing with it. Ah, circuit boards. What wonderful pieces of technology that ordinarily you'd have to wait weeks for. Weeks to have them produced professionally and then receive them and then you can go put your parts on. It makes design cycles really long. So some engineers have been recently trying to figure out a way to do this inexpensively in the comfort of your own home. The only problem is they're like 20 years too late because people have been doing it this way for forever and it's really not scary or hard and you can do it in like 30 minutes. Right here I'm uh, just printing out the designs on some clear plastic. I just use a laser printer for this or an inkjet printer or whatever. And throughout this video I'm going to show you how I print my circuit boards and why they're so quick. I don't understand how anybody thinks it's a good idea that, oh, hey, look at this $8,000 machine can do it in like 45 minutes. Well, I think I can do better. Okay, you may be wondering why I need to have the circuit board so quickly. Well, about a year ago, I had access to this big wood router right here, and I needed to use it to make something later on that day. I couldn't wait for shipping, so I just printed my own stepper motor controllers and my own optical whatever it is board. That actually came a couple days later. But my own stepper motor controller right then and there and uh, went and started using the mill. No shipping, no nothing. And if you're questioning the quality of these boards, these boards have been driving our mill for the last year. And we're in this big industrial environment. So uh, I think they're just fine. So, printing that took five minutes, so we'll tack that on the end. Right now, I'm gonna go click start. So, I'm gonna take some of these, the things we just printed. I've already used a couple of them, and we just cut out a pair of them. So what it actually is, is it's two of them that we're gonna put over top of each other. Now, we take the copper, we cut it to approximately the right size, a little bit extra. Clean the surface. Some people prefer alcohol or another solvent. I like steel wool because I know I'm getting down to the nice shiny copper then. Next, take some wrist on here. Cut off a piece of it for use. I'll just use extra. Trim it later. It's stored in the black to prevent it from uh, curing. Even ambient light, like from these LEDs, can cause it to cure just very slowly. It's designed to cure with ultraviolet. Then. We take a uh, pair of tweezers, which I don't know where the tweezers went. Oh well, you can use your teeth for this. Oh, tweezers? Tweezers. <laughs> Extremely convenient tweezers.
you pull at the edge, because the layers have different consistencies, they'll shear. And a little piece of the uh, coating, the protective plastic coating, will come right off. Then, get the circuit board wet, put the wrist on on. I used to spend a lot of time making it seal and all of that, and then I found out it really isn't necessary. Just have to make sure that there is no air bubbles left. Take a sheet of paper, fold it in half. Feed it into a laminator. Way came out the other side. Take it. Let's take it out now that it's bonded on the front. Now, flip it over so it goes on the back. Sometimes it helps to make sure it comes along. Just had a paper jam. If you're impatient like I am, you can hold release and just pull it out. Then, done with the laminator. Now, you can take this and peel back the wrist on. Just pull it off. Kind of cuts as it's going. Don't cut off all of it, leave a little bit of excess. That's trash. Now, you know what we need? I forgot some baking soda. I'll be right back. quite there yet. Jumping steps. So, next step, now that this is cold, peel this off. It exposes the bare wrist on. <clears throat> Gotta get a little sheet of paper to put this on. Three in one oil. Makes it so that these transparencies don't stick. Got to make sure that the right side is up, <clears throat> otherwise it'll print backwards. 
It helps to print text on it and make sure that the text is reading clearly. Go over and clean off the top here all the excess. Now, <clears throat> it's almost to 10 minutes. Let's wait till the 10 minute mark. And we turn on our nice little grow light. So this step will take four minutes and 30 seconds while the wrist on on the circuit board hardens. <clears throat> Stop. Let's just leave it running. I'll just speed it up. Okay. <clears throat> Is there a visible change? There, yes. Okay. So you might want to, yeah, if you can. It's going to start after this light turns blue, which it just did. I hadn't considered this. Oh, that's right, yours can focus that close. It's kind of a weird color balance there, though. No, I can't tell if it is focused, actually. <laughs> Okay, 14 minutes and 30 seconds. Now, just pull off these top two layers of the stuff, and you can see underneath, the, the places where it has become solid have become somewhat more darkened than the areas where it has not become solid. That's because the areas where it was exposed to UV becomes a plastic sort of thing, which does not easily come off in the next step. The developer step. So first, have to get some hot water, clean off this board. Three-in-one oil interferes with the next step, so that's why you get it nice and clean. Thankfully, it cleans off real easily. Just baking soda. We'll take a little sponge and kind of mix in the baking soda while you're does while you're developing it. I find it's just generally easier to kind of rub. So we put this in at exactly 16 minutes, well, almost exactly 16 minutes, and uh, this step takes four to five minutes. So around 20 minutes, we're gonna stop and take a look. 
and see where we are. Sometimes it's a little faster. You can tell because the areas that are uh, not exposed begin to wear away. So this is starting to, to really go. I think water temperature is, and the density, or I think water temperature and the amount of baking soda are what make the two big differences with this. Almost done. Almost. This actually went ridiculously fast. We might be done at 19 minutes. I think there was more baking soda in this than normal. Yep, we're done. sure to rinse it so all the baking soda comes off. It's just baking soda so that can just go down the drain. Next step, I fill the sink with uh, hot water. Probably enough. Let me take out some ferric chloride. Put it in. And this step, we're 20 minutes right now, takes another, well, up to eight minutes. So let's see how this goes. Make sure to get some circulation here so that the ferric chloride can get a chance to heat up. I have noticed that uh, I was always wary of heating ferric chloride at first, but now it's just makes everything go so much smoother and easier that I just always heat it. Every now and then I don't and then I regret it. I really don't know why. Why would I not heat it? Actually, I just realized that was eight minutes for uh, two ounce copper. This is one ounce copper. I guess that means it could be done in as little as a minute. I don't know, we'll find out. Yeah, it's starting to eat through already. That is uh, pretty quick.
that looks done. I'm going to go once more over just in case. Now, the way I know this is done, is you hold it up to the light, you can see through everywhere that has already etched. That way I know that there's no areas left that have not etched. So, dry this off with paper towels. Then we can just throw it in the water to rinse. Dispose of the ferric chloride. There seems to be some people who think it's okay to put down the drain, other people who think it's not. Um, when in doubt, I'm just not going to put it down the drain. Oh, there it is. to the water and this is lacquer thinner I normally use acetone but I'm out of it lacquer thinner is slower so gotta wait a little bit on that acetone is insanely fast Now, see here, 25 minutes and 44 seconds, I now have my circuit board. If you really want, I'll go cut it out. So it was nice edges and all that jazz. Cause you're like, oh, that's not really a full circuit board because it's not all cut out yet. Well, fine. How long does this take? I don't really know. I'll just look at the video when I'm done. Okay. Done. <laughs>